It's time for my NFL picks for the Wild Card Weekend. I'm Professor MJ, a 15-year university statistics teacher from Quebec City in Canada. Before the season began, I showed you my record on picks against the spread from the past six seasons, all documented since I started this Professor MJ brand. Each of those six years generated a profit. Indeed, the break-even win percentage is 52.4% when betting at minus 110 odds, or 1.91 in decimal. As you can see on your screen, we exceeded that threshold every single season. That being said, I am happy to report that we enjoyed our second-best NFL season from a betting perspective. In total, I shared 95 NFL predictions on sides and totals, which yielded 54 wins, 38 losses, and 3 ties. That corresponds to a 58.4% success rate, while our best year was 2017, where we got super close from hitting at the 60% clip. Alright, drum rolls please! It's time to get started on my wildcard weekend picks. Usually, I don't make picks on each game, but I'll do it for fun during the playoffs. Are you ready to rock and roll? Let's do this! The first game of the weekend features the Cleveland Browns traveling to Houston to face the Texans. As of now, the Browns are established as 2.5 point favorites. Please note that I shot this video on Wednesday afternoon, so it is possible that the line changes between that moment and the time that you view the video. I'm not going to make you wait any longer. I am grabbing the Browns minus 2.5 points in this matchup. Let me explain why. First of all, rookie QBs have not fared well during the wildcard round in recent years. Indeed, they have presented an ugly 2-9 record under those circumstances. Now, what about the rest factor? Sure, the Texans get one additional day of rest after playing last Saturday, but they had to fight hard against the Colts in order to punch their ticket into the playoffs. Meanwhile, Cleveland rested its starters since they had the number 5 seed locked up. So again, I am giving an edge to the Browns. If you have been following my picks for a while, you know how much I value the revenge factor. In this case, these two clubs met back in Week 16, a game won 36-22 by the Browns. For this reason, I would tend to be siding with Houston to get some payback. However, that is not enough to convince me to back this young Texans squad. Houston's offensive line has struggled at times protecting CJ Stroud. That's likely to be a problem against the stout Browns defense that racked up the 6 most sacks this season. And don't forget how they will be well rested after sitting most starters last week in Cincinnati. Houston's strength on offense is through the air. However, Cleveland allowed the second lowest QB rating in the entire league. With Tank Dell already out for the year, along with Noah Brown and Robert Woods ailing, I feel like things are going to be difficult for Stroud. He has a bright future ahead of him, but he'll need to wait until he gets his first playoff victory. Joe Flacco has a lot of playoff experience, with 15 appearances. During those games, he has tossed 25 TD passes versus 10 interceptions. He is coming off three straight games in which he topped the 300-yard mark, and he might do it again against a suspect pass defense. Let's go with Cleveland minus 2.5 in the first NFL playoff game. Up next, Saturday night will bring a fascinating matchup between the Dolphins and the Chiefs. Obviously, this game will mark the return of Tyreek Hill in Kansas City. 
But to me, the big story here is the weather. Right now, the temperature is expected to be between 5 and 12 degrees Fahrenheit. It will be damn cold at Arrowhead Stadium. That is very bad news for Dolphins fans since their team has lost each of their past 10 games when the temperature went below 40 degrees. And they lost those 10 contests by an average of 17 points. Ouch! Now, one might argue that many of the players were not on Miami's roster during those cold games. Fair enough. However, Tua is 0-4 when the temperature is below 45 degrees. And in this case, 45 degrees would look like a beach day compared to what's expected on Saturday night in Kansas City. To top it all off, you have certainly heard how banged up the Dolphins are especially on the defensive side of the ball. They had already lost two good pass rushers in Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips. Last week, two linebackers went down, Jerome Baker and Andrew Van Ginkle. To make matters worse, cornerback Xavier Howard is unlikely to suit up as well. You may as well call them their Team B on defense. At least the Dolphins seem to have a shot to get Jalen Waddle and Raheem Mostert back. But the key to their offense is Tyreek Hill, and he was hobbling again last week against the Bills. He really seems bothered by his ankle and quad injury. And if there is one team that knows how to slow him down, it is the Chiefs. So are you going to be surprised if I tell you that my pick against the spread here is the Kansas City Chiefs minus 4 points against Miami? Probably not. The only thing that worries me here is the spread. When I first saw it, I was clearly leaning towards the Dolphins because it looked too big to me. However, after digging deeper about this matchup, I felt like I had no choice but to go with KC here. Let me share a few more arguments. I believe the Chiefs head into the postseason with a big chip on their shoulders. Their offense has been struggling, and the entire team posted a disappointing 5-5 record down the stretch. However, they have a lot of playoff experience, and they are the defending champs. Patrick Mahomes is 10-2 over the past four postseasons. The Chiefs are 9-1 at home when the temperature is below 40 degrees. There are just too many reasons to back KC here. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the fact that the Chiefs rested their starters last week while the Dolphins played a hard-fought game against the Bills. You simply have to go with the Chiefs even if it means laying 4 points here. That's my two cents on this game. Let's keep moving by talking about the Steelers who are 10-point underdogs in Buffalo. Out of the six games, that is the one where I had the most difficulty making a pick. In short, this is the pick that I have the least confidence in. Still, I'm going to share valuable information to you so that you can make the best informed decision regarding your own bets. This is a big spread, but let me start by sharing arguments that would entice you to take Buffalo. First and foremost, the critical piece of news you need to be aware of is the absence of TJ Watt. Since 2017, the Steelers have obtained a 1-10 record when he has been out of the lineup. In those games, Pittsburgh's defense has allowed an average of 26.3 points compared to just 19.8 when he suited up. It's easy to see how vital he is to his team. Next, Mason Rudolph will make his postseason debut, while Josh Allen has already played 8 games in the playoffs. In those matches, Allen has done a solid job, with 17 TD passes versus just 4 picks. Moreover, the Bills are coming off 5 wins in a row. They were 7-1 at Highmark Stadium, and the Steelers have allowed at least 42 points in each of their last three playoff appearances. That seems like a lot to overcome for the Steelers, right? At this point, 
You may be wondering why I'm not pulling the trigger on the bills. Let me present reasons why you might want to consider betting Pittsburgh with the extra 10 points. It is projected to be cold and windy in Orchard Park this Sunday. Pittsburgh players don't mind the cold weather. The wind has a big impact on the passing game, which is a big plus for the Steelers because Buffalo likes to throw the ball a lot more than Pittsburgh does. In such conditions, it is hard to blow out an opponent. I also think the Steelers have an improving offensive line and they have talent at skill positions. Indeed, they have two good running backs in Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. At the wide receiver position, you could do worse than having George Pickens and Deontay Johnson. And don't forget tight end Pat Fryer Mute, whose pass catching abilities are very good. I was also astonished to read that Mason Rudolph led the NFL in completion rate over expected over the past three weeks. So, should we take Pittsburgh plus 10 points or Buffalo minus 10 points? If you force me to bet, I would go with Pittsburgh with the spread. But honestly, I am pretty unlikely to put some hard-earned money on this game, except on some money-making player prop bets, which I'm going to discuss in more details towards the end of this video. You don't want to miss out that part if you wish to grow your bankroll, my friend. The Dallas Cowboys will host the Green Bay Packers at Jerry World on Sunday afternoon. Mike McCarthy's squad is a 7.5 point favorite, and my pick goes to the Packers here. Ultimately, I think Dallas wins the game, but by a close margin. First off, I believe the Cowboys have a lot of pressure on their shoulders. They keep failing in the playoffs and the expectations are very high this year. Losing to the Packers in the wildcard round would be catastrophic. That will make players a lot more nervous, as opposed to Green Bay that's got nothing to lose since very few people think they can halt the Cowboys' 16-game winning streak at home. Wow! Jordan Love has been nothing short of spectacular since week 11. In this time period, Love has accumulated 18 touchdown passes versus just one interception. And he accomplished that feat despite missing some of his wide receivers and running backs at times, along with his top tight end, Luke Musgrave. That being said, I can't say I'm overly confident about this bet. Since the NFL expanded its playoff format, the number 7 seed has posted an 0 and 6 record, losing by an average of 12.2 points. Also, Green Bay's pass defense worries me a lot. It is possible that Dak Prescott will dissect them. Did you know that Prescott became the first QB in NFL history to get 4 games with a completion rate above 80%? within the same season? Still, based on my overall analysis, I believe Green Bay will do enough to cover the 7.5 point spread in Dallas, which will make Cowboys fans sweat a little bit. We have now reached the moment where I present the pick I like the most this weekend. I am taking the LA Rams plus 3.5 points in Detroit. I really love this bet. The pressure is on the Lions, who will be hosting their first home playoff game in 30 years, combined with the fact that they are the higher seed. Detroit looked a little bit less dominant down the stretch. They wrapped up the season by winning four of their final seven games, while the Rams racked up a 7-1 record in their last eight contests. Also, don't underestimate the importance of Detroit losing their star tight end, Sam Laporta. He was their second best pass catcher by far, and all signs point towards him missing the game, or playing on a very bad knee. Their fourth leading pass catcher, Calif Raymond, will probably be on the sidelines as well. 
Meanwhile, Sean McVeigh rested most of his starters last week in San Francisco. If there is one guy who knows Jared Goff's weaknesses better than anyone else, it is McVeigh. The team got rid of him because McVeigh did not think he would take them to the promised land. The Rams played eight games with Stafford, Cup, Nakua, and Karen Williams all on the field. In those contests, LA averaged 28.5 points scored per game, while Stafford tossed 18 TD passes and 3 interceptions. I find it hard to believe that Detroit will be able to slow down this offense, given how they allowed the 6th most passing yards per game this year. As if you needed more reasons to bet the Rams, here's the icing on the cake. According to scientific reports, peak athletic performance occurs in the late afternoon. Since the game starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, it won't be ideal for Detroit's players. But for the Rams, that will correspond to 5 p.m., which is perfect. In summary, I would be very surprised if the Lions won this game by a margin of 4 points or more. I truly believe the Rams will win the game straight up, or at worst, they might lose by a maximum of 3 points. That's why my favorite bet in the NFL for the wildcard weekend is the LA Rams plus 3.5 points at Ford Field. Two stumbling teams are squaring off on Monday night, as the Eagles will travel to Tampa Bay. On one side, you've got the Eagles, who got off to a 10-1 start to open the season, only to win one of their last six matchups. And if we are being honest, they should have lost their Week 12 game against the Bills. As far as the Bucks are concerned, you may be wondering why I said they are stumbling, since they won five of their last six games. But if you watch their final two games, you could tell they were not nearly as sharp. The offense scored just 9 points against the lowly Panthers and 13 points at home against the Saints. From a betting perspective, Philadelphia is a 3-point road favorite. Who do I prefer? Personally, I would tend to side with the Bucks. Things are really falling apart for Philadelphia. I even heard that some players are upset at the coaching staff. Their offensive line is struggling, their defense is awful, Jalen Hurts' middle finger in his throwing hand is hurt, which means he will play with a lot of discomfort. And we're not even sure if Devante Smith and AJ Brown will be good to go after suffering injuries. That's a lot to overcome. The Eagles completely dominated the Week 3 meeting between these two teams. In fact, they accumulated 472 total yards versus just 174 for the Bucks. That was a humiliating defeat for Tampa, so they will be looking to get revenge. With both of its top wide receivers banged up, the Eagles would prefer to run the ball. But the bad news is, Tampa ranked as the 8th best team in terms of yards per carry allowed. On the other side, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are licking their chops with a favorable matchup against a weak secondary. At the end of the day, give me the Tampa Bay box plus 3 points at home against a reeling Philly squad. I told you in the introduction of this video how we enjoyed a very lucrative 2023 NFL regular season with our wagers on sides and totals. What made this year even more special was we also crushed the bookies on player prop bets. Those types of plays are the easiest to beat since it is more difficult for sportsbooks to post sharp lines on every single prop bet, since there are more than 100 per game. That's also why the betting limits are much lower sportsbooks are afraid to get beaten on prop bets. This year, I have provided a total of 121 NFL player prop bets, which led to a 72 and 49 record. I am likely to find at least 10 good prop bets this weekend. 
If you like making smart investments, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my premium NFL Picks for just $21 per week at mjpicks.com. But wait, I have a special offer only available to my YouTube viewers. If you want picks that are data-driven and provided by a guy that took nine years of statistics courses at the university level before teaching the topic for 15 years, then do not wait any longer and sign up at mjpicks.com. To make it even more enticing for you, I am giving you a 50% rebate for this week. That's right, 5-0. Simply use the following coupon code when you reach the payment page. WILDCARD Now, I only want the most motivated and dedicated sports bettors to take advantage of this rare offer, so you must act quickly because only the first 50 people to enter this code will get this exclusive 50% rebate. So hurry up, sign up at mjpix.com and let's crush the bookies together this weekend on the NFL!